Hello Python programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a dice rolling GUI using Python. So first of all, let me show you that what is the final output that you can expect from this video. So let me run this program. Okay, so there you can see that this is our GUI. And if we click on this button, this is the face of our dice. Let me click on this uh, button multiple times. There you can see that the faces are changing. Okay, so if the dice of your Ludo or business is lost, then you can use this GUI to continue your game. Although it will be stupidity, but still you can use this. Okay, so first of all, let's discuss that what is the package required for this project. You only need Kinter for this project which will be used to create this GUI and as you already know that Kinta comes pre-installed with Python so we don't need to install that also. Okay, so with this being said, let's get to our editor and start writing our code. Okay, so now we are into our editor. So our first task is to import the required libraries which is first kinter obviously to create our GUI and second is random because we are randomly selecting the numbers okay now let's create the kinter instance the kinter uh, GUI instance then we'll define that what will be the geometry geometry if you are a regular user uh, sorry regular viewer of my channel then you must be familiar with these commands let's define that what will be the height and width of our GUI let's say that uh, it is uh, like 700 into let's say 450 okay you can experiment with this value if you want now as you know our GUI will have two basic component first is the button which will trigger the rolling of dice and second is the dice label itself okay so first let's create the label let's call this l1 so l1 is equal to label and then the first parameter is the gui instance and as you already know that we do not need to define that what will be the text because we will randomly select the number the font style is times uh, the size is let's say 260 you can select the size let's say 200 okay let's select the value as 200 you can define the value according to you okay and i guess this should be inside another brackets okay now we are not packing the label over here we'll pack the label inside the function okay so now let's create the button so uh, button not button it should be button and then the first parameter is as usual the GUI instance. Second parameter is a text that will be displayed on our GUI. Let's say, uh, let's roll. No, okay. And the third parameter is the command that this button will trigger. Let's say it trigger a function roll. Okay, so now let's place our button. So b1 dot place. Uh, it should be placed exactly at the top and exactly at the middle of our GUI. So let's say at X axis, which is the half of 750. Oh, oh, what is this Z doing here? It should be an X here. Okay. So the exact half of 700 is 350. So it will be present at 350 of X and Y is zero because we want this at the top of our GUI. Okay, so now let's close our main loop. Should be root dot main loop. Should be dot here. Let's close this, save this, and run our GUI. And we are getting an error uh, because role is not defined. Yeah, because we haven't defined our function role. So let's define the function role and let's simply print something so that we can check whether the existing code is correct or not let's save this and run our program no i don't want to buy 
and there you can see this is our GUI and the button is present exactly at the center actually it's not present exactly at the center because uh, the starting is present at the center but it's moving towards the right hand side so let's place this at let's say um, 330 yeah somewhat at the center now you can experiment with this value as you want you can even define that what will be the width of uh, this button by writing the width parameter here okay so you can use that parameter also okay so now let's work on this role function so that we can actually write the numbers on our dice so first of all let's create a number variable in which the list of all the ascii character of that string will be stored okay okay so now these are the ascii value for each of that numeric character like the number 3 is defined by this u2682 and the sixth number is defined by this u2685 okay so what else is left nothing actually we just need to config our label we'll config this and the text will be changed and actually we are doing some text formatting so we'll write an f here and actually it should be a dictionary inside and one parenthesis is missing i guess say so, yep okay so now let's pack our l1 don't worry because i'll explain you once again that how this thing work okay so let me save this and run our program let's click on this button oh, 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 oh. just a second because these will have a backslash also these are unicode and unicode cannot exist without a backslash how could i miss this okay so why is this uh acting special actually i guess one eight is missing yep, yep 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 let's save this and run our program again and there you can see uh okay so number three is acting weird so let's see what is the problem here okay so i have to pause the video because that error is not going i mean that bug is really pissing me off because it's not going even when we have done the exact same thing for others yeah there you can see that the three is printing just like normal but here three is acting weird and we have done same thing for both the dices they both are printing the random unicode characters of string but still sometimes it is acting weird and sometimes it's acting normal so uh so this i'm giving you as an assignment because really i was live coding in this video and i don't know how this error showed up because previously when i have created this project it was acting normal but now this error is coming up which is pretty strange so this is an assignment for you if you are able to crack this then then comment down below because i also want to know that what is the thing that i am doing wrong okay so this is it and i'll meet you in my next lecture where hopefully i'll create a program without any bug okay so meet you there bye bye